Okay, so question two, uh, moving on swiftly, relates to acetoacetic acid um, and some of its properties and reactions. So, first question asks you to explain briefly why acetoacetic acid is solid in water. Now, there's a very simple answer to this. So, acetoacetic acid is a polar molecule that can hydrogen bond and therefore is soluble in water. Okay, so that's that's all you need to say for a mark. You need to just say that it's a polar molecule, so it can hydrogen bond and therefore it's soluble in water. Simple as so this group here is what contributes to the hydrogen bonding. You can draw these kind of hydrogen bonding structures as you may have seen before. So part B for two marks asks you to name the functional groups present in acetoacetic acid. Now the fact that there are two marks available suggests quite strongly that there are two functional groups present. I've already circled one of them as you can see. This group is called a carboxylic acid group. So a carboxylic acid and the other functional group present is right here is a ketone. So for these two points you get one mark for each. Okay? So that's fairly straightforward. So the next part of the question asks, uh, so acetoacetic acid can be reduced using sodium borohydride NaBH4 to form CH3CHOH, CH2, COOH. Okay? So what you need to do is you need to draw a mechanism for this reaction, curly arrows, relevant dipoles, and using H- as the nucleophile. Okay. So one thing I will say is, even if a question does not ask uh, does not ask you to show relevant dipoles, I would strongly recommend actually drawing them on the molecule because then it allows you to see where the molecule might react. Okay. So here you know what your product structure is. So the only thing that is different between the product structure and the reactant structure is this bit here. So you see there is now an OH group here rather than this ketone group. So you're forming an alcohol from the ketone, so you're reducing that group. Okay? So what you need to do is you can see you've got your hydride nucleophile here, so hydride nucleophile. A nucleophile is an electron pair donor. So what is going to happen is you're going to see here that the carbon is electron deficient, so it's slightly positive, because the oxygen is more electronegative and so it's going to pull the electron slightly closer to itself in the carbon-oxygen bond and you'll see that that will have a delta minus charge as opposed to the delta plus. So this electron-rich nucleophile, this hydride ion, is going to be attracted and attack the delta positive carbon and in the process the double bond here between the carbon and the oxygen will break. Okay? So the electrons in that bond will go to the oxygen atom. So from here, what you've formed I'm just going to put H2 there just to make it a bit simpler is you've formed this uh, intermediate structure. And what you can do here is I'm going to put some H plus in there What's going to happen now is you're going to have this negative oxygen. Grab that proton there, and that is going to form. Yeah, that's going to form your new compound. There. So there's your mechanism. So this is worth four marks. So what are the four marks for? So the first mark is for this arrow here, this curly arrow, so representing the movement of the electrons from the hydride ion to the delta positive carbon. The second mark is for this curly arrow here. Let me redraw that. 
So the second markers for this uh, curly arrow here. And as well as that, you need the dipoles correct as well. So dipoles correct two. Uh, the next mark is for this curly arrow up here. And another mark for the correct intermediate structure. Okay. And that's how to do question two.